Okay, so welcome back. And so now here's another example. And so in this system of equations, uh, notice what we're doing. In, if you haven't noticed, but notice that we're going to eliminate these x's and this y. We we're, want to get rid of these y's so that we have an x, y, and then a z. So it basically goes down uh, a, a diagonal of sorts, right? Um, so if it goes down the diagonal, we want to get rid of these variables. So again, we're going to do uh, elementary row operations or elementary reduction operations to do that. So we're going to do two at a time to get rid of these two x's. So the two elementary reduction operations that we're going to get, or EROs, are going to be to get rid of this x and this x. So we're going to multiply by negative 2, because this is just a 1. So we're going to multiply by negative 2 and add it to this one. And then multiply row 1 by negative 3 to get rid of that one. So we're going to do negative 2 times row 1 plus row 2. And then we're going to do negative 3 times row uh, 1 plus row three, okay? So now, row one's gonna get changed, so that'll just give us x plus y plus z equals nine. And then, of course, these are gonna go away automatically. We know that because by construction, they, they are, have to go away. And so now we're gonna do negative two, right? So negative two times this plus this, so negative two y plus four y is two y. So we get 2y, and then negative 2z, right, because we're multiplying by negative 2. Negative 2z minus 3z gives us a minus 5z. And then, of course, um, negative 2 times 9 is negative 18, plus 1 is negative 17. And then now for this one here, we're getting negative 3 times this. So obviously the 3x goes away, negative 3y plus 6y is 3y. Negative 3z minus 5z is a minus 8z. And then, of course, uh, a minus uh, negative 3 times 9 is negative 27, plus 0 is negative 27. Okay, now, now we've got our next system of equations that we're going to work with, and now we want to get rid of this 3y. Okay? Now, uh, to get rid of the 3y, we need to multiply the second equation, right? Because we got rid of the x, so now we can use the second equation to get rid of this y. Um, if we use the first equation, right? The first equation seems to be easier, but if we do that, we're going to end up getting x back in here. We don't want x to come back. So we're going to use the second equation that just has y and z to get rid of the y's. So we're going to use the elimination process here. So now we got to figure out what do we multiply this by to get a negative 3 as a result. So we're going to do negative, uh, negative 3 halves, right? So if we multiply negative 3 halves by the, sec uh, by the second equation, or if we multiply the second equation by negative 3 halves, we'll end up with a negative 3, so, which, is, which will get rid of this. So negative 3 halves times row 2 plus row 3. Okay, so now we're just going to copy the first two rows because those don't change. So x plus y plus z equals 9. And then we get 2y minus 5z equals negative 17. And so now we're going to multiply by negative 3 halves. Okay, so we know this is going to go away. So now negative 3 halves times 5 is positive 15 halves. 15 halves minus 8. Well, what is that? Well, 15 halves is uh, the same as... Um, seven and a half, or excuse me, um, yeah, half of 15, right? Seven and a half. So seven and a half minus eight will give us what? A negative half, okay? So this will be negative one half z, right? And then of course, um, 
negative 3 halves times negative 17 is going to give us a positive 51 halves, right? And half of 51, half of 50 is 25, so it would be 25 and a half. Uh, positive 25 and a half. So that means if we subtract 27, that means what? Uh, 25, it'll be one and a half, right? Which is three halves, negative three halves. So that's going to equal negative three halves. Now, we've got fractions in there, but we're still good. We can still easily solve this, right? So now, right away, we start with the bottom one, right? With only one variable. So z, in this case, if we multiply both sides by what? Negative 2, what's going to happen? If we multiply both sides by negative 2, we get z is equal to 3. And then now we're going to substitute in the second equation, right? So then we get 3. So if we get 15, right? So 15, or should be uh, minus 15, right? And so if we add 15 to both sides, we get 2, and then we divide by 2, we get y equals 1, right? And now, look at this. Um, now we've got y and z to substitute in, right? So now we're going to substitute in 1 for y, 3 for z, which gives us 4 here. We subtract 4 from both sides, and we get x is equal to 5. Or hold on a second. minus 15. Oh, wait a minute. That's negative. Oh, that's negative. Negative 2. So this should be negative 1, which means, oh, hold on, which means I made a mistake here. So this should be negative 1. So this is 2. Oh, this is 7. Always check your work. Okay. Now, here, this brings up a great point. Now, let's say you get a solution. Always check your answer. So if I would have kept it as, as um, um, 3, 1, and 5, and I would have plugged those back into the original equation, because again, that's one of the things you want to do is check your work. So if you plug those back in here, you should get all three of these equations to give you a true statement. And if you don't, you made a mistake somewhere. So in this case here, I made a mistake, but I caught myself. And so now, if you go back and you plug in 3, negative 1, and 7 to all of these. So let's do that. So 7 minus 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9. Good. 2 times 7 is 14, plus negative 4, which is 10, minus what? 9 is 1. There you go, that one. So now 3 times 7 is 21. 21 minus 6 is 15. Minus 15 is 0. So it worked out. So this is correct. And that's it. Have a great day.